post operative nursing management or let's go first with your post operative period eto na yung period kung saan from the operating room ipupunta na yung patient sa ating recovery room or our post anesthesia care unit para mag recover siya from the anesthesia at saka sa stress from surgery now your post operative period is also the final phase of the entire surgical process this is your post anesthesia care unit or pwede ring recovery room so post often our PACU or our RR is located adjacently to the operating room. So, yung mga patient na nag-under ng anesthesia or nag-recover pa from the anesthesia, they are um, placed in this unit para agad na ma-access ng ating mga highly skilled nurses pag nagka-problema with the um Pag nagkaroon ng complication sa anesthesia, we can call agad yung anesthesiologist or our anesthetist, surgeons, and dun pa rin naman, and then our advanced hemodynamic and pulmonary monitoring and support. So, there are special equipments and medications dito. The PACO is usually kept quiet, clean, and free of your unnecessary equipment. This area is painted in your soft pleasing colors and has indirect lighting. It is also a soundproof ceiling and equipments that controls or eliminate noise such as your plastic and messes basin, rubber bumpers on beds and tables nakalagay doon para hindi masyadong maingay. And then it is isolated but a visible quarters for your disruptive patients. Now, the PACO should also be well ventilated and these features will benefit the patient by helping to decrease your anxiety and to promote comfort. The PACO bed provides easy access to the patient. It is safe and easily movable, can be readily placed in position to facilitate the use of measures to counteract shock and has the features that facilitate care such as your my IV poles, side rails, wheel brakes, and a chart storage rack. We have the phases of your post-anesthesia care. When we say phase 1, it is used during the immediate recovery phase. So intensive care, nursing care is provided. While on your phase 2 PACU, is reserved for patient who requires now less frequent observation and less nursing care. Dito sa phase 2 unit, um, the patient now is prepared for discharge. So, recliners rather than stretchers or beds are standard in many phase 2 units. Which may also be referred to as your step down or sit up or progressive care unit. Now, patient may remain in your phase 2 PACO unit um, for as long as 4 to 6 hours. Depende sa type of surgery and any pre-existing conditions ng patient. In facilities without separate phase 1 and phase 2 units, ang ating pasyente will stay on the PACO and may be discharged home directly from your PACU. Now, both your Phase 1 and your Phase 2 PACU nurses have special skills. The Phase 1 PACU nurse will provide frequent, um, when we say frequent, talagang every 15 minutes monitoring of the patient's pulse, electrocardiogram, respiratory rate, blood pressure, and pulse oximeter value. It is the blood oxygen level. And in some cases, Chine check din nila or dapat alam din nila ang end tidal carbon dioxide levels. And then the patient's airway may become obstructed because of the latent effect of your recent anesthesia. And your PACO nurse must be prepared to assist in re-intubation and in handling other emergencies that may occur. The nurse in the phase 2 PACO 
must also possess a strong clinical assessment and patient teaching skills. Important equipments that has to be in your recovery room or your immediate post anesthetic phase. So, uh, meron dapat siyang oxygen with O2 cannula and face mask, suction apparatus or machine, a cardiac monitor, kidney basin, respirators or your ventilators, mouth wipes, blanket, BP apparatus, thermometers, stethoscope, pulse oximeter to measure your O2 saturation, syringes with needles, emergency drugs, cardiac board, laryngoscope, endotracheal tube, tongue depressors, indwelling Foley catheter, drainage bottles, nasogastric tubes, clamps, airway apparatus, your bag valve mask, intravenous fluid, bedpan, and abdominal binders. For our immediate post-operative nursing care management, pag ikaw ang PAPO nurse, ano ang mga dapat mong gawin? Establish a patent airway. Now, first you have to assess the ABC or the airway breathing and the circulation of your patient. Also, to in checking the patency of airway, check the breathing. If snoring is present, this may be due to blockage of your anesthesia or your positioning. You also check now for the proper positioning of your patient. For the proper positioning, isama mo na din doon yung safety of your patient. So, pull up your side rails. The restraint has to have a legal entanglement. Now, tuck the blankets if um, the patient is having chills or is shivering. Then, provision of warmth and comfort. So, to prevent also your hypothermia, you check for the dressing and your bed clothes. Check for the bleeding. You assess if it is fully soaked, intact, and but do not manipulate your dressing. Is your dressing and bed clothes too tight to impair your circulation or too loose so it would have no use on your dressing now? Check also for the drains and tubes. Kung meron siyang Penrose drain, this is a rubber drain that is placed in the surgical site used for your discharges. Minsan, connected ito sa hemo box. So, dapat alam kung para saan yung mga port. Your first port is for your drainage tube and your second port is for your drainage. And then, you also provide safety. Parang sinabi ko na kanina, your side rails and your restraints. Just make sure na merong consent for the restraint. Now, closely monitor also for your physiologic changes. You check for the vital signs. Usually, pag sa PAKU na, it, um, or for the first hour of sa PAKU, your VS monitoring is done every 15 minutes. Then, for the succeeding hour, it is done every 30 minutes and one hour. Also, check for the skin color. Note for any cyanosis, pallor, and pinkish skin color. And then, the fluid balance. So, the amount of blood loss may cause you, your patient to have a hypovolemic sh shock. So, kung kailangan mag-BP or kailangan ng additional fluid. And then, also, Check for the um, presence of urinary retention and UTI. This may be due to the indwelling Foley catheter. Pwede rin sa anesthesia o pag not catet hindi nakakatheter yung patient. Um, kung may nausea and vomiting, so this can be the effect of manipulation of organ pag abdominal ang surgery. You also... Um, have to assess for the tympanism or the formation of gas in the patient's stomach. Isama mo na rin ang pain and comfort level. Um, you assess this through your pain scale and verbalization of your patient if um, 
he or she is awake. Then, prevent infection. So, uh, maintain your um, aseptic technique. Now, let's go to your post-anesthesia recovery grading or your standard post-anesthesia care unit assessment or grading tool. Now, this is also known as your Aldrich's scoring. So, so first, we have our activity. This will now determine the number of extremities the person can able to move voluntarily or on command. So, ang perfect score for your Aldrich score is 10. This will be used as a grading tool kung pwede nang umalis, um, ma-discharge yung patient sa PACU or not. So, criteria to follow, all extremities, if the patient is able to move all the extremities, 2 points. Kung isang extremity lang, 1 point. And if kung walang extremities na kaya niyang ikalaw, then 0 points. For the respiration, you determine the person's ability to breathe and cough. If able to do your deep breathing and cough freely, 2 points. This nick or limited ang kanyang breath, 1 point. And if up nick, yung patient mo, 0 ang inibigay mo. For the circulation, this will now determine the person's presence, present BP based from his preoperative BP. If the BP is equal to 20 mm mercury of your pre-op level, 2 points. Pag equivalent siya sa 20 to 50 mm mercury, 1 point. And if it is equal to 50 and above mm mercury, then 0 ang ibibigay natin. So consciousness, it determines your person's level of your consciousness. Pag fully awake, 2 points agad. Pag drowsy, medyo uh, antok-antok, tapos pero pwede naman siyang gisingin. Pag tinawag mo siya, then 1 point. And then pag no response, 0. Now for the color, it will now determine skin color. If normal or pinkish, 2 points. Pag pale siya, then you give your 1 point. Pag jaundice or cyanotic ang patient, then you give zero. So, 8 and above na score, pwede nang ma-discharge sa PACU unit. Pero pag 7 and below, do not discharge your patient. Now, pag nagkaroon ng 7 and below na scoring for the aldrich, then you monitor the patient and observe for any signs. And then, slow detoxification of your anesthesia. Indicators for discharge in PACU the RR nurse must note the time, check the IV level for INO monitoring, administer your oxygen therapy, face mask 5 to 6 liters per minute, and your cannula 2 to 3 liters per minute. Now, other criteria to evaluate a person's readiness for discharge will be the that the patient has recovered now from the effects of your general or regional anesthesia. Usually, 2 to 3 hours stay in the recovery room. Now, for the vital signs, it has to be stable already. There is only moderate or light drainage from any site. The physiologic effects of your narcotic medications have also stabilized and the person has regained a satisfactory level of your consciousness. Essential post-operative care has been completed by the RR personnel and then your urine output now is adequate at least 30 to 60 cc per hour for an adult. This will indicate of your normal excretion of anesthetic agent and also to detoxify. So the amount must be noted and recorded. Now staff on the clinical unit to which the patient is to be transferred have been alerted and notified and are prepared to receive the person. So, wag mong kakalimutan na inform naman ang ating ward nurses na may, uh, pwede nang ma-discharge sa PACO unit yung pasyente natin. So, dito sa slide, ito naman yung mga additional aside sa aking sinabi. Positioning clients and providing safety and comfort after surgery. So, pag integumentary system, pag let's say your patient has an autograph, 
the site is immobilized for three to seven days to provide the time needed for the graft to adhere and to attach to the wound bed. Burns of the face and head. You elevate now the head of the bed 30 to 45 degrees to prevent your facial edema. Pag circumfer circumferential burns of the extremities naman, elevate the extremities above the level of the heart now to prevent also edema. Pag skin grafting ang nag-undergo ng patient, you elevate and immobilize the graft site for the graft to adhere properly. Let's proceed to your reproductive system. Pag nag-undergo ng mastectomy ang patient, you elevate the head of the bed at least 30 degrees with the affected arm elevated on a pillow. This is to drain the fluid from the site. Pag episiotopy, you do your dorsal recumbent, recumbent position. For circumcision, dorsal recumbent or supine position is okay. Pag vasectomy, supine position. Bilateral tubal ligation, supine position. Hysterectomy, supine position pa rin. And tabiso, supine position. For our endocrine system, hypophysectomy, you elevate the head of the bed at least 30 to 45 degrees. Pag thyroidectomy, you do your semi position. Gastrointestinal system, pag gastrojejunostomy, gastroduodenostomy, or gastrectomy, the patient has to be in your flat or supine position. For colostomy, flat or supine position. Pag sigmoidoscopy, dorsal recumbent or your side lying, then flat position. Hemorrhoidectomy, lateral or side lying position. Liver biopsy, during, so we do your supine with right side of your upper abdomen exposed. And then the person's right arm is raised and extended over the left shoulder behind the head. Pag after ng liver biopsy naman, it has to be right lateral side lying position. Now putting pressure for the liver not to bleed. Respiratory system, laryngectomy or a radical neck dissection, we put our patient into semi fowler's position. Bronchoscopy, you do your semi fowler's position. Thoracostomy and thoracotomy, side lying or lateral position, it depends on the operated side and the person should not lie on the operated side. So, semi fowler's position and lie on the unaffected side. The incision and insertion between your third, third or fourth rib. Ito yung common na site na. For thoracentesis, during sitting on the edge of the bed and leaning over the bedside table with your feet supported on a stool. Now, after thoracentesis, you lie on bed on the unaffected side with head of the bed elevated 45 degrees. Pag nag-undergo ng tracheostomy ang patient, flat or supine position and immediate post-op, then semi position. For the cardiovascular system, abdominal aneurysm resection, 45 degrees or your fowler's position. Amputation of your lower extremity, you elevate the foot of bed for the first 24 hours. Then position the client prone every 3 to 4 hours for a 20 to 30 minute period. Arterial vascular grafting of an extremity, the affected extremity now is kept straight for at least 24 hours. For your cardiac catheterization, extremities that is inserted with catheter is kept straight for 4 to 6 hours. For vein ligation and stripping, you elevate the feet above the level of the heart. Sensory system, cataract surgery, you elevate the head of the bed 30 to 45 degrees to prevent, to prevent your increased IOOC pressure. For retinal reattachment or detachment, semi or 2 to 3 pillows overhead. For your extracapsular cataract extraction or your ECCE, elevate of the head of the bed and 30 to 45 degrees. Neurological system, cerebral angiography, flat on bed and then 6 to 24 hours post-op.
craniotomy or craniectomy, you elevate the head of the bed 30 to 45 degrees and maintain head in a midline neutral position. Laminectomy, flat on bed. Lumbar puncture, flat on bed or supine for 4 to 12 hours now to prevent the leakage of your CSL, CSF. Myelogram, it is when there is an injection of your radioopaque dye. Or, um, so, pag water soluble, ang ginamit, head of bed is elevated for 8 hours. Pag oil based, flat on bed for 6 to 8 hours. Musculoskeletal, pag hip surgery, so keep the affected leg abducted, then place pillow in between legs for a normal position. Post-operative nursing care. First is you have to prepare your ether bed or your surgical bed and oxygenation devices as required. Second, you receive the patient with reports regarding the identity of your patient, the type of surgery, the type of anesthesia, presence of drains or types of dressings, presence of your endotracheal tube or oxygen device, other tubings such as your T-tubes, catheters, or your urine bugs, your IV fluid or central venous um, lines, administration of blood or blood products, allergies, and pre-existing medical conditions, spreading diabetic or hypertensive ang patient. Third, you assess all sedated patients for respiratory functions, so oxygenation must be adjusted as needed. Cardiovascular functions, pulses ng patient, i-check mo. Fluid and electrolyte balance, so INO monitoring. The temperature also of your patient. Oxygen saturation level. Your neurologic status. Presence of pain and the safety of your patient. Fourth, you determine the swallowing and gag reflex. The level of consciousness and then put in side lying if patient is still sedated. Fifth, we have your suction as necessary to keep your airway open and patent to prevent now your rebound hypoxia. Inspect dressings and tubes for excessive drainage and refer. You carry out the orders of the doctor for amount of oxygen, pain relief, and then positioning, fluid infusion, and status of your patient with regards to fluid and food intake. Perform also safety checks on straps, pressure areas, warming devices, or movements after spinal anesthesia. Ninth, we have to um, aseptic wound handling with other practices to prevent infection. And number 10, assist to mobilize as soon as allowed. Now, for the post-operative nursing care na isa pang kailangan nating i-check is that on the first 24 hours, i-refer natin ang patient for any abnormalities, especially pag um, anesthesia-related to our anesthesiologist and anesthetist. Pag ang problem is on the surgical site mismo or related siya sa surgery or procedure, you can um, you can refer the patient to your surgeon pero most probably ibabato ka niya sa anesthesiologist for the first 24 hours of your patient now you have here is your sample charting meron naman kayo sa handout niyo so check it na lang now as you can see sa charting natin is that Every meron siyang important na details, kailangan nakasulat doon yung time. So, sa circulator or sa circulating nurse, you have to be mindful on your time and kung kailan nag-start yung surgery at saka nag-end yung surgery. Meron din namang nakasulat sa whiteboard. 
every OR room. Tapos, um, hindi nila masyado sinusunod ang ating FDAR or your supply kasi for the operation naman or for the surgery or any procedure, kailangan narrative tayo. So, step by step or kung uh, by procedure yung dapat ilagay sa nurses notes. And then, we also have your PACO notes. Um, these, uh, these notes are my student nurse notes pa. So, mag-alter yan depende sa institution at saka sa pag um, staff nurse ka na. So, that's it for your perioperative nursing.